So this video is going to dive into what all went into designing as well as what all went into actually manufacturing the combustion chamber. Um, so first we, we really didn't know what all went into a combustion chamber other than it was the big hollow tube and we needed to throw fuel and spark into it and there had to be a smaller tube on the inside to stabilize the flame inside of the tube. Um, Luckily, we were able to find a program written by engineers that actually have already worked on this stuff. And what that program did is it took the dimensions of our compressor and it actually gave us dimensions and specifications of what we, how we needed to build our combustion chamber relative to our compressor. Um, so as you can see, the program took the diameter of our compressor as well as how many primary, secondary, tertiary holes we wanted in the flame tube. Um, we'll get into the, what those zones do for the flame tube later in the video. Um, but, but it took all that and it actually gave us dimensions for the outer casing of the flame of the combustion chamber as well as the flame tube inner casing. Um, the whole diameter and how many holes we needed and the length of the flame tube and everything else. So once we had that figured out, we then started to model the combustion chamber in SolidWorks. Now we ran into a problem buying tubing and cones and everything else to actually manufacture the combustion chamber was going to be extremely expensive. Well, SolidWorks has this great feature where we can convert things to sheet metal. So that's what we did. You can see we take a look at our flame tube. This is the flame tube as it is in the engine, right? You can see our holes like we were mentioning. But what we did was we converted it to a sheet metal design. And what that allowed us to do was to flatten the part. And in flattening the part, we were then able to actually put this into a CNC plasma cutter and cut the part out on a table. Now this allowed us to make all of our parts out of a piece of sheet metal and with the parts cut flat on the table we would then take we took a tubing bender and we bent the tube and then we welded all the parts together um, you can see my friend Jacob Walker welding everything together Um, we used his machine shop for all the manufacturing. He actually has the the cutting table as well as the welders and the tubing bender and really everything we needed to actually build the entire engine right in one location. So once the parts were actually bent and welded together, we had eight indiv individual pieces as seen here. So you can see the outer casing, the diffuser, the top, the nozzle that feeds it down into the turbine as well as the flame tube on the inside of the combustion chamber. Now we then welded all of these pieces together to get our final product that looks like this. So you can see that air feeds through here and then comes out here into the turbine. Now on the top of the combustion chamber, we ended up drilling three holes into it. Now here we take a look at the top of the combustion chamber and we can see that there are three ports in the top of the combustion chamber, one for propane, diesel fuel, and our spark plug. So now that we've talked about what the combustion chamber does and you've seen the design process that went into creating the combustion chamber as well as the manufacturing that produced us the prototype. Uh, I'm just going to show you how the combustion chamber integrates in with the rest of the engine. So you can see, as we talked about before, the combustion chamber is in between the compressor and the turbine of the engine. So air is piped from the compressor through into the combustion chamber. The exhaust gas is then piped out of the combustion chamber and into the turbine. So 
as air is leaving the compressor, it's it, it gets compressed and it's moving really fast. Now, that's not great for the combustion process. We want a slower moving air for the combustion process. Uh, the slower moving air will help the fuel mix in with the air as well as it'll keep the flame in the flame tube longer, burning more of that fuel up in the combustion chamber. So to do this, we place the diffuser in between the piped air and the combustion chamber. Now the diffuser not only slows the air down, but it compresses the air even farther, which is really good for the combustion process. So after the air exits the diffuser and enters the combustion chamber, it goes into the outer sleeve of the combustion chamber before it enters the flame tube. Now, as we talked about earlier, the flame tube has three sets of holes in it, the primary, secondary, and tertiary holes. So the primary holes, when air enters the primary holes up here, that air is mixed with the fuel and that's where the combustion initially starts. The secondary holes are right around in here. What the secondary holes do is they add more air into the actual combustion. So it stabilizes the flame really well. The tertiary holes are down at the bottom. And what the tertiary holes do is they actually cool the exhaust gases down before they enter the turbine so we don't damage our turbine. So you can see as after the tertiary holes, before the turbine, it tapers down. So this is a nozzle and what the nozzle is there to do is it actually speeds the air back up before it enters the turbine. Now we want this because that will spin the turbine even faster, which in turn spins the compressor even faster and provides us more air for the combustion process. So that really finishes up the actual design and the manufacturing of the combustion chamber and a little bit of how the combustion chamber functions and what it does. In later videos, we'll get more in depth on really the thermodynamics that actually make the whole engine work and how the combustion chamber ties into the rest of the engine. Um, thank you for watching.